Well, the complaints is written against the backdrop of the huge financial crisis that was happening back in January, February, March of 2009. Um, Edinburgh was credit crunch ground zero. We had banks going to the wall. Halifax Bank of Scotland, headquarters in Edinburgh. Royal Bank of Scotland, headquarters in Edinburgh. The ex-head of the Royal Bank of Scotland was having his house vandalised and had fled the country. Also, we had this huge tram works going on, but it was going to cost hundreds of millions of pounds and might bankrupt the city. So I just thought it's a really interesting um, time frame in which to write a crime novel. So yet again, I was at a cop, at a crime, and I had Edinburgh. I don't know where I first came across the Complaints and Conduct Department. I mean, every police force has one. These are the cops who investigate other cops for perceived misdemeanors. And it can be something really, really petty, like somebody complains about a cop parking their car in a disabled parking bay, or a neighbour complains about a cop who's always having loud parties at his house. So you get real meat and potato stuff, but then you also get the big stuff that is looked into by the professional services unit, the dark side, the complaints, the PSU. Um, that's, you know, people who've been taking bungs, people who've crossed the line, all this sort of stuff. Um, I, I forget who first mentioned it or where I came across it, but I talked to a, a fairly senior police officer who put me in touch with someone who used to run um, the complaints department of a Scottish police force. I'm not going to name which one because I don't want them to be identified. They did speak to me um, under the cloak of secrecy. But they told me such great stories, great anecdotes. And also I just got a sense of an intriguing character coming out because this is, you know, people who work in the complaints are mistrusted and hated even by their own kind. And yet they will have, they've worked with these people before, the people they're investigating, their fellow cops. And they will have to work with them again because you're not in the complaints for your whole professional life. So you're busy making enemies or making enemies of people who are your friends or, and always remembering that you may have to work with these people in future. So you've got these very hated people, mistrusted by their own as well as mistrusted, mistrusted by criminals. And I thought it's also a very passive thing. It's a, it's a voyeur, it's a spy's job because they spend a lot of their time looking into people's phone records or bugging their phones or bugging their um, mobile phones. They, they have vans full of electronic equipment and they'll sit outside your house if you're a suspect and they'll be checking every keystroke of your computer on your home computer. They'll have checked your hard drive of your computer at work. They have extraordinary power. And so it's more like a spy than anything else. And I love the idea. And this actually goes back a long way. It goes back to a guy called Miles Flint, who was in my third novel, Watchmen. He was a professional spy in London working for MI5. And it's that idea of a voyeur, a professional voyeur, who suddenly is turned into a person of action because the world turns against them and they must become a person of action to try and work out what's going on and why. Why is it happening to them? So the idea that having invented a, a member of the complaints called Malcolm Fox, that he would then come under investigation himself and would have to work out who was doing it and why, just really tickled me.